Hey guys, I'm assuming you're watching this video as a follow-up to my first video, which was calculating your electrical loads, because this is the place to start. So hopefully you're starting this with a spreadsheet. And you've gone through all your devices that you want to power inside your rig, inside your cabin, inside your boat, whatever it is. And you calculated that all out. And then you should have given yourself probably some amount of battery capacity, right, that can feed that system, because that's what we want, right? That's an ideally designed system. Solar panels generating the correct amount of power to fill a battery bank, which is our storage device, that gives us enough power that even without that solar, for one full day, we can run all of our load devices. So lights, laptops, Starlink, ovens, deep fryers, whatever you're rolling. Okay, so you've done that. But did you derate? And that's the question. And I talked about that in the first one, but I think I maybe wasn't totally clear. So I'm going to try and make this a little easier. And, and I'm going to start with, uh, and I apologize to my high school science teachers, but I'm going to start with the two laws of thermodynamics. That... No, and I don't care. And the first one is that energy is never created or destroyed. It just changes form, right? Do not click off of this video. Keep watching. I know it's going to get sciencey and a little mathy for a minute. Energy never created or destroyed. But what happens is we have two things. Electrical energy, right? Photovoltaic energy coming out in the form of, of voltage and amperage. But that gets converted in a lot of places to heat. Okay? It gets converted in your loads, but it also gets converted along the way. And that's, that's the main conversion that we're looking at, um, at losing here. And so the second law of thermodynamics, what it basically says is you, you can never break even. You're always losing. Things are, are moving toward entropy right this is this is the issue so there's a lot of people that just want to do the math of hey i've got 500 watts of solar on top of my rig uh the sun is out eight hours a day therefore i should be getting 4,000 watt hours in but that's not really true and it's not true because well the sun right moves in an arc and you're only getting maximum efficiency when the sun is pointed directly onto your solar panels. So all the rest of the time that it's moving along that arc, you are getting less and less and less efficient the more it moves down. Also, seasonally, right, the sun is moving the other way. And so during the winter months in northern climates, you're going to get less and less efficiency out of your solar panels unless you are tilting them up to face the sun. And even then, cloud cover being dirty. You're always going to get less than you think you're going to get. So when I look this up, for a per 100 watt panel, you're going to get about 425 watt hours per day. Just kind of an average thing, you know, middle America. Again, the further north, the less you're going to get. The further south, the more you're going to get. The more cloudy it is, the dirtier they are, the more you're in shape. There's a lot of different stuff. Anyway, what I really want to talk about, though, is... Why is it that even after you've, you've sort of lost that, that you've got additional deration that needs to happen inside the system? Well, solar panels are connected with a piece of wire down to a charge controller. Okay? That charge controller is connected with a piece of wire to the batteries. Batteries connected with a piece of wire, maybe to an inverter, right? And then you are somehow plugged into that inverter to charge, let's say, a laptop. Okay? Each one of those pieces of wire and every connection is going to have at least a minuscule amount of resistance. And what resistance equates to is loss of electrical energy into heat. Now, you can test this out yourself. Go plug your hair dryer in, right? A max heat. Let it run for 30 seconds. Unplug it. Feel the prongs. They're warm. They're not warm because the hair dryer warmed them. They're warm because of the little bit of voltage drop. When you slide those prongs into the outlet, there's just a little bit of a gap, and it generates a little bit of heat. Well, wire is also has a little bit of resistance to it. Copper wire has a tiny bit. Gold would, right, would be less resistance, but nobody can afford it. But you, you're always going to get a little bit of resistance, okay? And so that means you're going to lose everywhere. You're also going to lose at your charge controller because it's going to generate a little bit of heat doing what it does, right? If you put your hand on it, you're going to feel a little warmth, okay? 
your batteries are going to generate a little bit of heat where they're connected, right? Your inverter, if you ever felt an inverter, they generate a decent amount of heat. And, you know, you can get better inverters with less loss, but um, inverters are kind of odd because... They actually get more efficient the more power you draw out of them. So the less power you draw, um, the more heat they generate. So, okay, that's the problem. What's the solution? Well, there is no complete solution, but there's things that you can do to make it better. Okay? And the first thing that you can do to make it better is to increase the size of the wire. Okay? So cross-section here. So we're going with bigger wires than we might want to. Now, you can look at the NEC. And they're going to give you suggested wire sizing for amperage that you're drawing through it. The issue is here. The NEC guidelines are written by the NFPA, which is actually the National Fire Protection Association, right? And what do they want? They want to prevent fires. So what they're looking at is they're looking at having a large enough conductor that it doesn't generate enough heat that it could possibly cause the insulation to melt off, arcing, and then a fire. But that's not what you're looking for. I mean, yeah, you don't want that. But you need to go to another level so that you are not losing and wasting, right? Because it's every watt that you get out of those solar panels is probably going to be precious to you. I have, I've seen several of these spreadsheets come from people, and every one of them has just tons and tons of stuff. The American life has become highly energized. So you want every single watt that you can get out of it. So we can increase the size of the conductors. The other thing, we are going to make sure that all of our connections are quality, okay? Now, in a house, wire nuts are fine, and I've used probably 100,000 wire nuts over the course of my life. A house doesn't move. If you are in something that is moving, that is tweaking, that is rocking back and forth, wire nuts are not an acceptable connection method. You need something mechanical. So either a crimp-style fastener, right, and then screw down with lock washers okay we want to make sure that there's nothing dirty on those connections we want good metal to metal mating on everything okay and that is going to reduce the amount of resistance in between and keep your voltage drop reasonable the other thing and uh you need to keep power as native as possible okay Solar panels are going to bring everything in, and you're either you're going to go with it's going to be DC power, right? So you're either going with a 12, 24, 48 volt system, but but you're going to be bringing power in in DC, okay? So I see a lot. Let's let's take the laptop for example. I need to charge my laptop. Well, I'm starting with DC in the solar panels, right? Losing efficiency, losing efficiency. It goes into the batteries, then it goes into an inverter. I lose efficiency. It goes out of my inverter into my power supply for my laptop which converts it back to DC right so you can see we went from DC to AC to DC so if possible see if you can get as many of your devices to run on the DC system as you can um, it is huge and, and if you want to find out about that let your laptop drain all the way down plug it in and then put your hand on the power adapter and see how much heat you're generating there it's it's a lot and when you did right because i know you did the math i know you wouldn't want to skip out on the math when you did those calculations right and you the manufacturer tells you how many watts right your your device needs they don't take any of that into account right now they might they take the power supply and that into account but not taking any of the rest of that so this is why we're derating so and we're derating by I suggest 20% and I know nobody wants to hear that nobody wants to hear that they spent all the money to get this and now I'm only getting this much power out of it and now I'm losing an additional 20% here that just doesn't seem fair blame Newton um, it's just the truth of it you know we're all moving toward entropy and there's just no way of avoiding it but we can reduce it big wire good connections and as close to the native power type as possible if you do that you're gonna have a lot better system you'll be a lot happier out there and you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck good luck and uh, hopefully another video coming after this let me know if you like it in the comments